Do you want to make your own podcast? Spotify has a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. And this is the platform that I use because it makes it so simple to record and distribute your podcast all in one place using your cell phone. What you need to do is download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started. Hello, my name is Katherine Moore, social worker, mom, coffee lover, and founder of Social Workers Rise, where we inspire social workers to connect, expand their knowledge, and change more lives than they ever thought possible. I'm so excited you found my podcast. We will talk everything social work on every level from micro to macro. We will hear the stories of social workers who are doing big things, learn new skills, and most importantly, give you actionable steps to make a difference today. Let's go. Before we hop into this episode, it's important to acknowledge that being a new grad and a new worker can be really hard sometimes. It's not in your head. It really can be hard. And grad school just doesn't teach us everything that we need to know to be successful in the real world with our jobs. So in order to bridge that gap, we created the Clinical Essentials for the Future Therapist. This course will fast track you into honing those skills that you need to actually help your clients in an individual setting. It'll save you time when you're trying to figure out what the heck to document. It's going to increase your confidence in your abilities that you are doing this right and give you the tools that you need to be even more effective. And it's going to improve the professional quality of your notes so that when your colleagues and your coworkers read them, they say, wow, that's a really thorough, detailed note. I love it. Let's do this. And it provides clarity on how to help the person. So if this sounds like something you would benefit from, definitely check the link in the show notes for the clinical essentials for the future therapist. With that, let's hop into this episode. Hello, welcome to another episode of Social Workers Rise. This week, we sit down with Kyrene Darko. You may see her on Instagram as the SW Mentor. She is a UK-based social worker talking about leadership. And what does that actually mean? And what does that look like in the setting of social work? We talk about how you can leverage your existing skills to really grow in your ability to be a leader. And yes, yes, you are a leader. Do not tune me out right now because you think this doesn't apply to you. It does. If you are working with other people on any level, you, my friend, are a leader. And listen in to hear exactly what I mean by that. She's going to share what the differences are between what we have seen in the UK and the United States, talk about leadership, how to leverage those skills that you already have, and also what skills do you have that millionaires are currently trying to leverage for their business? So definitely stick around. This is a good one. Hello, Kareen. Thank you so much for joining me on the Social Workers Rise podcast. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. I'm glad we've got this opportunity. Yes, me too. I'm really excited to get to talking with you and get to know you a little bit better. Um, I'm so glad you actually started the connection by reaching out to me in October 2020. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Definitely. I think at that point, I just kind of come onto Instagram in terms of with the social work mentor and was 
following social workers who were doing amazing things and I came across your page and I was like oh my gosh I need to talk to her <laughs> <laughs> you're so sweet I'm glad you did because I love the stuff that you post on the social work mentor what is your like what was your thought behind starting that page and what is your mission so ultimately what I do is I help social workers to develop and thrive in their social work careers so that they can become successful leaders um, and what that was about for me is because, you know, I've spent a lot of my social work career working with children and families. That's a lot of where my passion lies. But in addition to that, my passion has always been around supporting social workers as well. Um, and I've done that informally for years, whether it's been students, newly qualified social workers, um, social workers less experienced than me. I've always done it. And it just reminded me and made me realize that there was such a gap there there's not always that opportunity for social workers to check in with someone who is that bit more experienced or may have a bit more knowledge in a particular area. Um, and that's what led me to create the social work mentor, to create that space where I was able to support and provide services to social workers. I love that. That's so powerful. It's similar to my story too, that I was looking for, for someone else in the field to look to for guidance for just, you know, something, anything really. Um, I, it almost feels like, especially working out there in high stress environments that you're just kind of grasping at straws at like anything that can come your way for help. Definitely, absolutely. And I remember that's how, and even now at times, you know, you're always, no matter how experienced you are, I just feel that you're not exempt from that. And I know for me, um, having support from people more experienced is so important. So being able to offer that now is, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And even just having people in different areas of expertise. So I know that it's thrown around like, oh, get a mentor or whatever. But what I have found is I don't have one particular mentor, but there are people that I know who I'm like, okay, this person is struggling with addiction. Let me go to this person. This person is struggling with trauma. Let me go to my trauma person. And so I found yeah. that having a diverse network is really, really helpful. Absolutely. I completely agree. I completely agree. I think exactly as you're describing, having a, a diverse network is so, so helpful, you know, and for me, whether it's having um, support or mentors or conversations with social workers who are less experienced me, than me and more experienced than me, those who are still doing the direct work and those who are a little bit more strategic, it just is helpful for me to kind of see as a whole what's going on with social work, you know, apart from my little bubble that I work within and yeah and that's really helpful and now especially being on Instagram and seeing more so about social workers in the US again that's not an area that I knew much about at all and I wouldn't say that now even I know that much about it but that's opened my eyes a lot more into what's going on in the US with social work some of the things that are similar some of that are different so I definitely think there's huge benefits to doing that. Yeah, and so because you're in the UK, and I will admit I don't know anything about social work in the UK. But since you brought it up, what have been some of the differences that you've seen? Um, you know, even even if it is on Instagram, like what are the different conversations? So I think the biggest thing that I've realized is that, and tell me if I'm wrong, but in the US, you will do a an undergraduate or a master's but that will give you different, open different doors for you ultimately. So I've seen um, BSWs and MSWs, and it sounds like an LCSW, which I'm still not too sure what that means, but um, it opens different doors for you ultimately. That's the impression I'm getting. Whereas in the UK, you will do um, an undergraduate, um, or you'd only do a master's if you've only got, if you've already got um, another degree, but ultimately, both of those degrees will um, open the same doors for you. You'll have the same opportunities, whether you've got the master's or the um, BA or, or BSc, Bachelor's of Arts or Bachelor of Science, um, you still have the same opportunities either way. So that's the big difference that I've noticed. Yes, that is true. So here in the US, it's very, um, the first word that comes to mind is hierarchy. Like um, if you have a bachelor's, you're kind of limited to doing case management. 
And once you get your master's, then that's where you learn the therapeutic techniques, or hopefully you learn the therapeutic techniques. Every program is different, uh, at which we're, it's very disjointed over here. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're trying to, I would like to say that we're trying to get it fixed, but I'm not really sure. I'm not too confident in that. But um, but yeah, so BSW, case management, MSW is more therapeutic. It opens up more doors, like you said. And then the there's different letters after that. So different states, you can be a licensed MSW. Um, here in California, I after I get my master's, then I can get my um, associated social work license, which means just that I'm pursuing clinical license for my LCSW. Okay, interesting. Yes. So as you said, yeah, there's lots of different routes, ultimately. Um, and I'm assuming that means probably a lot longer in terms of studying. Yes, yeah, yes. Yep. Longer in terms of studying, more money. All of these little licenses take money. Yes, exactly that. It's really interesting how it differs because I think, yes, for us, you do the um, undergraduate, which would be three years, or you do the master's, which is two years, and then you're a social worker. You are a qualified social worker as long as you pass it, everything. Okay, so are you only known as a social worker, like quote social worker, if you have a social work degree? Yes, yes. So you have to have a social work degree in order to be um, a social worker. That's the only way that it's a protected title. So it's the only way that you can be called a social worker. Um, we are registered under a, a body that we have to make sure that we are um, adhering to capabilities and, and conduct and updating our continuing professional development. Um, so yes. Interesting, because that must be another difference because here you can get a job as a social worker in, some, in a lot of states and not have a social work degree. Oh, interesting. Wow, that is a huge difference. No, that's really different here then because though you have to have that social work degree but then I can see even more so then why in the US it's so important to have those titles. Yep. Mm, how yep, because they're really going to differentiate you. And it's, um, for me personally, it's a really big, what's the word? I'm really passionate about title protection. That's when you might hear title protection floating around. That's what we mean. Um, to get where you guys are to where you can't call yourself a social worker unless you have an actual degree in social work. So, um, but that is a whole nother topic <laughs> that I'll probably do an episode on. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to hear about that. <laughs> but you mentioned, you know, I wanted to get back to our original topic, uh, which is leadership, right? So, yes leadership, I feel is one of the most untapped, like, um, wait a minute. We aren't tapping into our leaderships as social workers, basically. Uh, we have so much potential, like it blows my mind how much potential we have and it's untapped. So can you break down it's cause leadership, the word is kind of like vague can you break it down like what do you mean leadership I mean as you said you know leadership is an area that I'm so passionate about because exactly as you said as social workers many of us um, I mean we should be tapping into it more many of us are natural leaders as social workers we just haven't necessarily recognized it yet or we haven't developed the mindset um, to to recognize that we are leaders and, and act on that but when I talk about leadership, it's about being able to lead, to encourage, to influence, um, ultimately in order to effect change. Um, it's also about being able to teach and inspire as well. Um, and, you know, really for all social workers to be leaders in my view is key, because if you have good leadership skills and you have a good leadership mindset, 
that's how you're going to effect change in the communities that you work in. Um, and so that's why I talk a lot about leadership in that respect. So how do we get those leadership skills? Because I just took some notes, lead, encourage, influence, yeah. teach, inspire. All of those sound really great, but if we are feeling not fully confident in ourselves, I can see how that would be really, really difficult. Absolutely. Firstly, I would say, start to think about your existing skills, what you do on a daily basis, start there. Because what I always, you know, that is really important because a lot of us, as I say, are natural leaders as it is. And I think we don't always recognize that. And that's why we struggle to tap into that. What a good leader is on a really basic level, you're a good listener, you're a good communicator. You've got the ability to learn, you're willing to learn, you're creative you can think strategically. And I think sometimes when we start to hear that word strategic, that's when we become quite worried and it sounds quite scary. But actually, what does strategic mean? It's about being able to make decisions um, that will affect more than one person and ultimately trying to make decisions that will um, have a positive impact on as many people as possible. That's what strategy and, and being strategic is ultimately about. So that's, again, that's what leadership is about. It's about being able to influence. And, you know, as a social worker, ultimately these are core skills that we already have. Um, and, and that's what, to be able to work with a, a service user, meet them where they're at and encourage them to make changes in their own lives. That is a, a powerful leader in itself. And so it's about at that point, what do you do with that? Do you continue to work um, as a leader on the level that you are or do you take that into a larger scale and I think that's where that's a, di a different conversation you know leadership isn't always about doing it on a larger scale you can be a leader at any level that you're at but when you are wanting to go on to the larger scale it's about okay these are my skills how do I level these up now how do I position myself how do I find opportunities, seek roles that are going to help me to develop these skills further? Could I start a community or a group? Do I need to provide resources of some kind? Can I collaborate with other social workers? You know, that's all about thinking, how do I take these skills onto a larger level to be a leader on a larger scale? But putting the larger scale aside, all of these bits that we're speaking about already, those leadership skills, continuing to develop them in your day-to-day -day work are just really, really key, seeking opportunities in how you can do that. Um, that's what's going to change communities that we work with. Because, you know, another thing that Catherine and I often say is, you know, for me, how likely am I going to listen to somebody that I don't know? And the only way that I do that I'm likely to do that is through fear or through inspiration, you know, and as social workers, we don't want to effect change through fear, you know, that doesn't sit well with our professional values and our personal values. So we need to look at how can we inspire um, and inspire is often about role, mod role modeling good leadership. So powerful. I just have all of these thoughts running through my mind because one, when you mentioned all of the ways that we can grow our leadership skills, like um, how can we reach out? How can we um, connect with other people? All of those things, it, it made me think of instead, maybe instead of how can we, um, or instead of like, um, could I, could I reach out, right? Maybe like, how do I reach out to all of these partners? Right. So instead of picking one question, we need to be strategic, as you said, and say, how can I utilize all of my resources to help solve this problem? And it really is going to take, you know, getting creative, as you said, um, which, yes. which we have those skills. We know what the problem is. You know, business people, business people would like 
That's all they obsess about is what is the problem? We know what the problem is. Exactly that, exactly that. We've got the answers and it's just about reminding ourselves of that, developing our confidence in our skill set and our knowledge base um, and truly using those to become leaders. Because I think in most different job roles, people are quite confident to call themselves leaders. But as social workers, we kind of shy away from that idea of being leaders or kind of feel that the only way that we are leaders is if we're sitting on a board somewhere, you know, more on a, in, in that kind of capacity. And of course, you know, that, that is a leader, but you can be a leader at any level that you are at as a social worker. It's true. It's almost like a not a dirty word, but it's for them. Yes, exactly that. Exactly that. And I, and I found that, you know, even experiences that I've had at times when people are talking about leadership, um, it's almost, yep, yeah, this is what I'm doing at the moment as a leader, but I'm still in touch with what's going on. Kind of that kind of being apologetic about it, you know? <laughs> Yes, yes. But you don't hear business people being apologetic about anything, even when they should be. No, no, exactly. Exactly that. Definitely. And we just need to become more confident in our leadership skills and, and say it proudly. We are leaders. We are leaders. Let's say it together. We are, <laughs> we are leaders. <laughs> if you are listening to this right now, say, I am a leader. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay. Let me see. I'm kind of looking at what I wanted to ask you just to make sure that we covered everything. I think we covered everything. I mean, we covered a lot today. I really liked our conversation. Definitely. So have I. And I, I think it's really refreshing for me as well to be able to speak about leadership in social work, because exactly as you're saying, it's not a conversation that we have very often. It's not a conversation that people are confident about speaking about, but I'm just hopeful that it, it because starts to become a conversation a lot more. And as social workers, we're starting to think very early on, you know, what is my long-term plan here? You know, how can I tap into my leadership skills early so that I can really effect change in the communities that I'm working with? And really embrace and embody our leadership as a social worker to really, to really just live in it and say, you know, okay, I am a leader. I have an advanced degree. I am a leader. I can, I can lead, encourage, influence, teach, inspire. I'm a great listener. I am a great communicator. I can be creative if I'm not burnt out, which is a whole nother topic yes. and, yes. and be strategic. Absolutely. And just telling, just exactly as you've just done that, Catherine, telling ourselves that, reminding, reading those things out to ourselves, they're all forms of positive affirmations. And if we tell ourselves that enough times, we will start to believe it. And I think that's where the, the difficulty has been. We don't often tell ourselves that we're leaders, do we? And I think that's where, um, that's why we don't believe it a lot of the time, but we need to start using those words, inspire, influence, teach, all of those things that we do on a daily basis. That's what we need to be talking about to really believe it ourselves. Yes, and even if you have a bad definition or idea, just look at those stories and that doesn't have to be your story. So <laughs> I'll give you a little insider story. Somebody, it must have been last summer, uh, about six months ago, one of the people I was talking to on Instagram, they say, you know, Catherine, thank you so much for what you're doing. You're such a great influencer. And I was like, whoa, hold on. I'm, I'm not an influencer. I'm not like one of those beach babes on the beach. Like, <laughs> nobody's paying me to wear their sunglasses. Um, <laughs> but I had, to, I had to really simmer on that and think, oh, okay, oh, shoot, I guess she's right, because I, I am influencing a positive change. Exactly that, 
Exactly. Yeah, that's actually a really good example. I, I've not thought about that because, yes, if, you know, the way in which the world is now, the word influence, the word influencer means something very different to us now. And that probably would have been my initial reaction as well, thinking, no, 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 I'm not an influencer. But actually, yes, you are. You're influencing change. You're influencing positive change. Absolutely. And um, you influenced me to feel more confident to have the platform that I have, because actually, there are other people who are having similar conversations about respecting social work and um, supporting social work. So absolutely, it's about similarly to leadership. That word is how you make it. How, how, what kind of, you can ask yourself, what kind of leader do I want to be? And that's the leader that you can start to develop yourself to become. Oh my gosh, I got chills just thinking if, oh. if we have social workers who are ethical who are positive who are influencing like good change and leading good change and getting those dirty politicians out of there and putting them in with ethical people exactly the, the imagine change. what the world is look like exactly yes oh my gosh all the feels all the feels i did i you know i was actually in a room on clubhouse recently and it was talking about what business people it was it was a room full of millionaires so what mm -hmm. do the millionaires do to to grow their millions and they were saying that their big focus is on relationship building and being strategic and great communication and just really being authentic and i'm like wow. that, that's wow. That's what we do <laughs> every day. <laughs> absolutely, it, oh, it's, it's so interesting when you when you say that because yes, absolutely, that is what we do every single day, isn't it? But we just don't put the name, and you know, we don't put particular names to it, and and that's what it is. And I think you know, I've always been quite business minded, but actually, in my mind, which I this is a unlearning that I've had to do business and social work did not go together. You know, you, you don't mix these things together. You just don't do that. Um, so, but actually that business aspect of that, that I'm really interested in has allowed me to really research some of the, the people and the, the business owners um, or people in business that I respect and understand actually how did they become leaders? What do they do? What attributes do they have to make them good leaders? And recognizing that that is, transferable into my social work career um so th there are lessons that can be learned everywhere yes have you found ways to transfer those business skills into your social work career i would say definitely i'm definitely in the process of still doing that but it is exactly as you're saying so things such as being authentic exactly as you're saying these are things that i i believe that i am at the moment things like that being strategic again <clears throat> so for me it's about having conversations about how is what i'm doing at the moment how can i reach more people to do that you know how can i meet reach more social workers to get my message to them to support more people so i think with every conversation that i'm having with myself everything that i'm writing down on paper i'm starting to think about well how can i reach more people to to get this message across to them how can i maintain my values continue to maintain my values and support others to do the same yep i love that that's beautiful i love that Thank you so Thank much you. for your time. Thank where you. can where can people find you? So at the moment on Instagram is definitely the best place to find me, um, which is at the SW Mentor. Um, or email me as well as another good location for me, which is info at the social work And I must ask, do you have coaching places available, coaching spots? I do, so my, my next mentoring program starts on the 8th of March, and that's a leadership program. So definitely have time um, to have conversations with people and get you onto that program. And what we do in that program is all about confidence building, mindset shifts, leadership, developing your leadership skills, looking at how your current and existing skills are transferable into leadership roles. So it's perfect for anyone who is aspiring to be a leader, 
has questions as to whether they can be, be, be a leader. You know, we work with you. I work with you to focus on your goals, um, your vision, and really look at making sure how you can achieve those. Love it. Powerful. So powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And be sure to follow Kyrene. Be sure to reach out to her. Share this on your Instagram and you can tag both myself and Kyrene and let us know what you thought about it, what your big takeaway was. I am looking forward to seeing that. All right, Kyrene, All right, thank, thank you. you so much. Lovely. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Social Workers Rise. If you loved it, write a review and give us five stars wherever you listen to your podcast. This just helps other people just like you find us and join our community. Also, I would love to connect with you on Instagram. You can find me at Social Workers Rise. I can't wait to see you next week. Bye.